On this episode of Beyond the Check, we're in historic Savannah, Georgia. A place so beautiful, it was spared Sherman's wrath and given to Abraham Lincoln as a Christmas present, leaving the historic buildings of America's first planned city all intact. Now housing some of the best little restaurants in the South, one of which being the French-inspired cuisine of owner Chef Pat McNamara's Noble Fair Restaurant. Now in his 12th year, Chef Pat serves up only the finest ingredients sourced from around the world to bring his artistic vision to the plate for the enjoyment of locals and tourists alike. Hello, and welcome to the second episode of Beyond the Check Worker Owner Edition. I'm Rashawn Parker, and I'm here with my beautiful, lovely wife, Jordan. Say hi, Jordan. We are down south in the beautiful and historic Savannah, Georgia, and we're heading to a very quaint little gem of a restaurant. It's a fine dining establishment just off the beaten path of downtown Savannah called Noble Fair, run by uh, Chef Pat McNamara. It's gonna be a good time. It's like some French cuisine. Jordan's gonna try some things that uh, she's never tried before, maybe. Should be good. Fun fact, cameraman for the day is uh, my good friend and producer, Cayman Eby. He doesn't like to be on camera, so he's following us right now in the car. He's gonna be hanging out. You'll know he's there, but you won't know he's there. Right. Right, first, we're going to pick up a lovely lady named Steph, who has worked at the restaurant for years and is going to give us a little insight into the place. So that's gonna be fun. So uh, let's go pick up Steph. All right, we just picked up Steph. She is the manager slash catering coordinator slash service slash everything? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Uh, Noble Fair is a small locally owned business. It was started in the end of December of 2007 by Chef Patrick and Jenny McNamara. And because we are so small, we all have to wear a whole bunch of hats. So, you know, not only am I like front of the house manager and event planner and server bartender, hostess, everything, uh, Chef Patrick is not only the chef, but is also in charge of, you know, doing all the ordering and will also be known to wash a dish when he, uh, when he has to wash a dish. And that's pretty much everything. That's <laughs> the life of a worker owner I'm coming to find absolutely, out. Absolutely, absolutely. We are doing some renovations right now. We're just kind of changing up the interior a little bit some things up it's it's that time you know the building was built in 1879 so it needs a lot of TLC so <laughs> definitely that time good place to work absolutely I would have been there for eight years eight years yeah, right. I mean that's kind of it, once you pass seven years working somewhere you're like this is my life I, yeah and I have told them on many occasions I'm like you're gonna gonna have to like physically remove me from this building I'm not going anywhere <laughs> I'm here for the long haul so I'm so excited to eat here. I was in once a long time ago okay. when he was doing the late night, like throw together whatever. Oh yeah, over. yeah, 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 um, yeah. Yeah, late night menu. It came in. Yeah, people. that was a yeah. That but was years a ago, ago, so I've never actually sat down and tried God. just the food. So You're gonna love it. I'm you really pumped. are. Um, all about quality. You know, if if it's not the very best that he can get his hands on, he won't serve it. So uh, you're really gonna be in for a treat if you haven't sat down and had the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. It's very exciting. Yeah. I think you got front and center that's right that's here. Spot. Yeah, why not? Fantastic. And it's free. You don't find many free spots in downtown Savannah. Yeah, I know. Parking dogs and you get side. to eat at Noble Fair tonight. Oh, high five. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's go meet Chef Pat. <laughs> Let's do it. Boom. How you doing today? All right. Hey, hey what's happening? Hey, Chef Pat. What's going How you on? Doing? Good. What brings you here today? You know, I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah perfect. I hear you have amazing food. Yeah, it's okay. I'm gonna cook you today, though. Sound good? A little veal chop? Yeah. yeah. Sound good? A little yeah. tuna? Yeah, yeah. How about some soup? Warm yeah. up? A little yeah. chilly today? It is a little chilly today. And then I will finish with some dessert. All right. Sound good? That sounds fantastic. All right. I see you got some fun guys there. Oh, yeah. It's going with the veal chop. I was talking. Good? I was talking about us. Oh, oh gotcha. Uh, <laughs> well, the name's Patrick McNamara. Um, we uh, acquired the building back in 2007 of July. It was actually 07, 07, 07. Like I say, the luck of the Irish is always being behind us, so it was a lucky day that day. And we've been open for 12 years now. 12 years. Yep, and Noble Fair, the name's where we came up from it, in Gaelic, Noble is Patrick, and my wife Jenny is Fair. We kind of finagled the spelling a little bit here to make it more an Americanized. 
but that's where we came up with it. And uh, we're into fine dining. We love selling an experience when you come here. And I'm uh, more of a specialty chef, just because it's local and organic, this meets the best. I like to ship in my stuff from all over the world and uh, offer the best experience we can. Nice. What, uh, what originally got you into cooking? Like how old were you? What was your inspiration uh, into like? I think it was actually started as a child. I mean, my mom, we were always had a set dinner. I was always late for dinner. And if you were late, whatever, fend for yourself in the fridge. So I think that's where I actually started cooking, whether it was leftover, tomato soup, whatever, there was always something in there. And uh, I think that's where it all started. But then at one point, growing up, I worked in a restaurant. You know, my brother got me a job after he kind of graduated high school. I went into the uh, dishwasher. I always started in the dish tank, worked my way up. And I just kind of fell in love with the whole food and wine. And that started in my teens and here we are. So you are the worker owner of this restaurant. You are you the only chef? Yes. Uh, yep. Uh, I've been here um, since day one. Um, I've had a lot of different chefs or sous chefs come in or apprentices come in the last 12 years. And they've actually been, they graduate from the program, I call it, you yeah. know, after teaching so many methods and techniques and theories and whatever philosophy, whatever, it's just get it done and be ready. But what's good is they go on and go to other kitchens and learn what they can. One of my classic things I do in an interview, it's like, I know you know this, let me teach you this. Then when you walk away, you got that. But the thing is saying, hey, I know you can show me things, but let me show you what I want here. And then you can show me things whenever you get this done. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. fair is fair, right? <laughs> here it's kind of the chef's dream to actually only have 12 tables. You can, can kind of troll everything control the pace, the quantity. My ticket rail is only three feet big, so it's not gonna get any bigger and sillier than that. It all starts with as soon as you walk through that door. What do we strive here is service, because I'm only as good as the, you know, the right glass now. pour of wine, and you know, we're the defense in the back, and they're the offense out front, our service staff. And so it's the whole experience we provide. We do an a la carte full menu. We do pescatarian, vegetarian, so on and so forth. It might not be on the menu, but we'll accommodate everybody. I do classic food. I don't do shrimp and grits. Nothing wrong with shrimp and grits. If I have the if I have the grits, I'll do it for a customer if that's what they want. But I'll do my risottos, my carnarolis. I'll do all of my traditional sides. I'll do oso buco. I'll do lamb shanks. I do duck. I do um, scallops. I do the finer things that are out there. I always have caviar. I always have foie gras. And I always have truffles on my menu. So I like to play with the finer things in the food spectrum. Yeah. And doing indigenous local food, you just can't do that. So, and everybody has shrimp and grits down here. Yeah, absolutely. And you go to them. As far <laughs> as that, I'd rather have you come into our 12 table intimate little setting here and have an experience. We also do a chef's tasting menu too, as well. So, if you want to sit back for about take a four hour vacation and do a tour of the menu and have little different proteins and textures all through the whole menu, so you just don't have the entree or a salad or an entree and dessert. You get a little taste of everything your little heart desires instead of actually getting one or two or three things. And our service staff, we don't have a bartender, so you present you, so on and so forth. So it's a little different experience. It's yeah. kind of like having one person coming into your home and they're the they're the sommelier and they take care of you and make recommendations if required. Most of the service staff are all pros here. They love making cocktails. So at one point they have inputs on the menu as far as specials and making our simple syrups and all of that fancy ice cubes. Yeah. Now it's all about ice cubes. So and one, one ice cube. Yeah, one, one big one. It's got to be square, not yeah, rounded. It has noble fare sketched into it. Ooh, not yet, but I'm sure that's coming. I'm sure that'll be a requirement coming down the line here in 2020. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. My wife, Jenny, um, oversees all the administrative here, does all the marketing, does everything I can't do or don't want to do. My son works over at our other place at Totally Baked mm -hmm. whenever he has time off from school. And then my daughter will come in on Saturday nights and busy nights with mama, and she'll kind of be the bar back a little bit. Aww. Yeah, and she'll seat people, host us, but most of all, she'll grab the iPad and go upstairs and watch some YouTube. As a chef, I mean, you, I mean, they're 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week sometimes. Absolutely. So it's got to be hard to, you know, spend time with the family and oh, yeah. well, there's, all of it together. That's why I always strive to get my own restaurant as a chef, because we are closed on Sundays and Mondays, so I can be dad. I can, we can have at least two family meals together. It's called the balance in life and, you know, cooking for other people the rest of the, you know, time of my career building to get to this place. I've missed every single holiday. I've missed every Friday and Saturday night and all of that. So at one point, I want to 
I learned more what not to do than what to do to have the balance of life <laughs> okay. and to have that balance of life, especially when you're a dad, a husband, a father, a chef, and owner. So I have to split those 380 hours up a week and only a third of it goes to the restaurant being a chef. I want to be a dad more than I want to be a chef at this point in my career. Okay, so what happens if you get sick? Put a clothes sign, you know, right. gone, not instead of gone fishing, gone <laughs> sick. <you know? laughs> sick. Like, sorry. Chef but yeah, sick. work through it, right? You know, yeah. make right. some chicken noodle soup and eat a lot of garlic. We got people to feed, right? <laughs> <laughs> the show must go on. Yeah. So we wanted to go for locals. We wanted to be that special place. You come for your anniversary, date night, uh, keep the kids at home or bring the kids either or accommodate everybody who comes through the door. Um, but I wanted to be like Jay Grandmere, like grandma's house. You come here, you're very comfortable in a setting to where you almost, there's no hurry. There's no turn and burn. You sit here and have four hour experience and relax. Take your shoes off if you want. Right. Where there's no hurry. It's your table all night. Yeah, and we're, we're going to have our own little, own little five course tasting menu today. That sounds yeah. great. I look forward to cooking. Right. How about the soup of the day? What's going on there? Soup of the day. From those local mushrooms, you trim them up and then we have the stems of them. You know, waste not, want not. So I make a nice, beautiful soup with the uh, stems of the local mushrooms. Uh, celery, carrot, onion, garlic, um, tons of butter, a little bit of flour just to tighten it up, all kinds of heavy cream, and I like to use 40% heavy cream, salt, pepper, a little truffle oil, a little truffle butter, Can't be and wrong. then some brioche croutons on top, and a uh, little fresh cut parsley and call it a day. All right, so we have the mushroom bisque here. Jordan, you like mushrooms? Here and there. You're gonna try some. She's trying I'm new. Try it. She's trying new things. New things. New things so today. that's what this is about. So here we go, the famous mushroom bisque. Creamy. I expect there to be more like chunks of mushrooms. But, no. but it just like melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Uh, Daddy? She likes it. She likes mushroom bisque, everybody. And the croutons? Mmm. Uh, what's next? I would love to do the tuna tartare. Right, here's a fun fact. Jordan has never had tuna before. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> she's she's, <laughs> gonna, she's gonna try some First tuna time. today. This is great. And what's good is the way having this tuna, it's gonna be a cold preparation. So yeah, I'm gonna do mine a little differently here. It's an ahi right. yellowfin tuna, comes in fresh. I serve it with a uh, pineapple pico de gallo, which is just a golden pineapple, uh, diced fine, cilantro, cumin, ancho, little red onion. We also toss that with a little bit of salt and pepper, do an avocado puree, put it in a nice little timbale tower, and then on top we'll put a little creme fraiche that we make in house, top that with a little bit of ocetra caviar that we get from the Casbin Sea, and then we garnish with a little sweet curry oil with a little plantain chip so you have a little, you know, chips and salsa we call it. Okay, so we now have the tuna tartar here, as well as the Savannah Mule. It's a house specialty. It's very gingery and delicious. You should, I wish you could have one. Jordan, you wanna try something new? Sure. Yeah? Good. Ginger beer? Ginger beer. Man, she is growing. She is growing. All right, tuna time. Tuna time! Tuna time. So, caviar, caviar, make sure you get a little of the caviar there. Okay. Okay, ladies first. No, you can first. No, ladies first. No, first. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna take a little piece of this, this here and put it on there like a cracker. So, got some caviar and the creme fraiche. 
tuna Put on there. Come on, join me. Let's do it at the same time. You want this one? Drum roll. Jordan's first time having tuna. The very first time. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. It just melts in your mouth. Not sold? Mmm. So it's got the pineapple, like little crunches of the sweet pineapple. They just like really bring out the freshness of the tuna with a like hint of herb. Oh, it's the oil, the herb oil, and the truffle oil. Oh my God, it's so good. I'm sorry you don't like it. Cayman, no, you're gonna like love it. this. You're gonna love this. Oh, okay. I like it. Um, the headliner time. The one dish that somebody would drive a million miles just, just to have. Absolutely. I fly in this veal, okay, from the Netherlands. It's a Dutch veal, and it's a pan-roasted veal shop. The veal comes in racks. I get a hotel cut. So what I'll do is take the fat cap off of it and the sinew down. And then I'll do individual chops after I clean and French the bone up. And then what I'll do is, with once I have the individual chops, I'll tenderize them just a little bit. Don't pound them out, because they're beautiful and they're huge. They're big, the biggest veal chop you'll ever have, <laughs> next to Fred Flintstone. And then I'll pan-roast it. But before I pan roast it, I'm gonna rub in sweet smoked paprika, uh, telecherry peppercorns, and a little uh, just kosher salt, something real simple. Pan roast a little duck fat, a little canola, and some brown butter. Mm. Both sides, finish in the oven, pull it out, and serve it just with some local mushrooms from my local forager, some cremini mushrooms, a little veal glaze, and a little bit of truffle oil and red wine reduction. Just keep it meat and potatoes, real something simple. All right, oh my God, look at the size of this thing. It is literally the size of your head. <laughs> okay, we're gonna cut into this bad boy. You have to come on in here for this. Here we go. Oh, it looks beautiful. Oh, that is a beautiful veal chop right there. Have you ever had a veal chop before? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, that's for you. Oh, I'm having a big bite. <clears throat> this is, I mean, it's a, it's a big chop. I'm having a big bite. You ready? Cheers. Australia. Oh my God. Good. It's so juicy and tender. I can barely, it's just falling apart in my mouth. I can barely even have to chew it. Mmm. With the mushrooms. So good. I just want to pick it up with my hands. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's so fresh. It's so crunchy. It tastes like green beans still. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. Bravo. Bravo, chef. Bravo. Bravo. Amazing. I see you salivating over there. You can have some. <laughs> All right, let's do dessert. Mmm, <coughs> -hmm. oh, right? Mmm, right? Okay, one more bite. One bite. All right, and then uh, what's for dessert? Do you like chocolate, Jordan? Yes. Okay, great. I got Valrona chocolate that we get from Italy, or France. I forget exactly who owns the rights to Valrona, but we get this beautiful chocolate. Make a little, uh, it's pretty much so a lava cake. It's an uncooked cake. Do it with a little house-made custard ice cream, house-made caramel. Fresh raspberries, a little raspberry coulis, serve it warm with the ice cream. Every every woman I know appreciates <laughs> chocolate, so you're gonna be the judge of this. You gotta let me know if you like yeah, it or sweet. not. All right, we now have a chocolate lava cake. 
I have coffee in the most adorable little French press ever. It comes tableside for my, yeah, I'm super excited about that. I'm also super excited about this. We waited a little too long, you know, to like shoot stuff before we ate. So our ice cream is now a dipping sauce, but that's okay, it's gonna be amazing. You dig? Okay, she digs. Let's dig in. Mmm. Dip it in the sauce. Gonna dip it in the sauce. Okay, calm down. I think I just went to heaven. Mm-hmm. And back. Mm -hmm. With a stop by hell, because so decadent and delicious creamy in the middle. And it's ice cream sauce. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I could eat this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Oh crap. Mm. So good. Guys, if you're in Savannah, Georgia, you have to stop by Noble Fair and have the tasting menu. You have the whole tasting menu. I want to taste more things than just the few that we had. You have to try it. It's fantastic. The people here are great. Chef Pat is just a fantastic dude, so. Come in, have a drink with them even. Totally worth it. You just opened a sandwich shop too, right? I did, yeah. I'm sick of going to Subway and feeding my family for $40. It's ten. why don't we open up a sandwich shop? We can make our own damn sandwiches and right. we could go anytime we want, pack up a weekend basket. But also I wanted to open up another sandwich shop close to downtown where super banker hours I call it, between 10 and four. So we could one take away from what we do here. Here at the restaurant at Noble Fair, we're open from 5.30 to 10, Tuesday through Saturday. So if necessary, I could be here ready to go at five, work at the sandwich shop at double time. Right. Yeah, so I can enjoy those Sundays Oof. and Mondays off with the Phil. The life of a worker owner. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's all on your shoulders, really. Yeah, yeah, and at uh, one point, but I got a great crew that's been with me a long time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, appreciate it. And, uh, We'll be back for sure. Sounds great. Look awesome. forward to it. Jordan, you got, you got anything else? Good. All right. Good we'll get out of here. You All have right. a wonderful night. Sounds great. Awesome. Jordan, nice seeing you. Cheers, sir. Woo! We noble fared it. Okay. It was noble. And it was fair. And I'm very full. Very full. Very full. Delicious. Chef Pabst. Fun guy. A lot of fun hanging out with him. Did you have fun? All right. Well. I guess that was uh, episode two. Thanks for hanging out and watching, and uh, off to the next. So we'll see you next time when we go beyond the check. Worker under edition. Cheers.